Welcome everybody to Download on Drugs and Devices. Uh, tonight we have a couple special guests. We have our very own Dr. Amy Brodsky who will be moderating tonight's program and presenting a program on how to develop an affordable skincare regimen for all skin types. Uh, we also have Dr. Leslie Bauman as well. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to, to Amy here. To uh, It's all yours. Take over. All right. Thank Hi, guys. I'm welcome, Dr. Amy everybody. Brodsky. Um, hopefully, you guys can hear me. Today, we're going to be talking um, about how to build an affordable skincare routine, which I think is really relevant, and it's sponsored by Dermamate. So at the very end of this talk, we'll kind of have a call to action if you guys are interested in taking on Dermamade, I think there's probably over like 30 practices now that use it, and it's been great in my practice. So um, let me introduce Dr. Leslie Bauman. Um, Dr. Leslie Bauman is somebody that I've always admired from afar, and because of our um, similarities and how we think about cosmeceuticals, we actually met and we've been on the same page, and she's been such an amazing mentor to me. Um, so she wrote the first book on cosmetic dermatology, and she just came out with her third edition, and it is the second best-selling dermatology book in the world right now, which is amazing. And you probably know Dr. Leslie Bauman from Dermatology News. She writes a column on cosmeceuticals, which I've been reading since my residency, and I've always thought of her as one of the foremost authorities on cosmeceuticals. She's a wealth of information. So I highly recommend that you guys read her book. And then she was also the developer of Skin Type Solutions, which is the software that creates a way of telling patients what their skin type is. And then it uniquely um, introduces a regimen in a certain order. And it's a scientific algorithm that she's proven over and over again for 20 years that this works. Um, so I'm gonna introduce you to Dr. Leslie Bauman um, and she'll take it from here. So hi everyone, thanks for being here. Um, I'm going to go over a little bit, oh, that's, I'm gonna wait a second. I'm gonna go over a little bit about my skin typing system and how I use it to make skincare regimens. And the, the history of this is when I was at the University of Miami, I wanted to start selling skincare products. And at that time, this was back in the 90s when it was very controversial. If you remember, there were all those articles about if it was ethical or not. And we did a survey of all of our patients and 100% of our patients said they wanted us to sell products. They said it was because when we gave them samples, they were afraid they were going to buy the wrong thing. They wanted to um, make, you know, they just want to make sure they had the right thing. So we were able to take that survey to the University of Miami and they let us start selling products. Uh, but I realized I needed to make my practice more efficient and I needed to figure out how my staff would be able to help me make skincare regimens. So that was about uh, 10 years ago, 2005. Um, and we realized, um, and I've done so much since then and I've collected data on over 300,000 people. And basically that's what we're gonna be showing you today is how to make it easy. And it all starts with the 16 Bauman skin types. And they're based on these four issues that people have with their skin. And the first is dehydration. And the second is inflammation, which is if you have sensitive skin or acne or rosacea. The third one is hyperpigmentation. And the fourth one is aging. And these are the four things that you need to think about when you're prescribing a skincare regimen. So what I did, if you know the Myers-Briggs personality type, it's the same idea. I took these four problems, mixed them together, and there are 16 different skin types. So each skin type has a different combination of these problems. You can see number 10 is the easy, normal, no problem skin type that most of us as dermatologists never see. While type three has all four problems, those are the hard ones um, that we're gonna be talking about later too. But each skin type needs different skincare regimens. And over the last year, what I think I said 10 years, whatever it was from 2005 till now, I've developed 40,000 different regimen templates and software that does this for you. So basically you get to pick what products you wanna sell in the practice and then going forward, the software does it for you. So I'm gonna show you how that works. The software allows each doctor's office to choose what products they want to show up and populate in the regimens. This gives you a lot of flexibility if you have different brand preferences or price preferences. 
So for example, vitamin C serums, um, the vitamin C serums that are in here have to follow certain rules and you can do a drop down menu and you can choose from many different vitamin C serums. Um, you also can choose by price, so you can pick low price, or you also can do by brand, which we're going to do today. We're going to preset Dermamade, and so any one of these product types that Dermamade has a product for, it's going to populate there. And then going forward, you're going to see the Dermamade products in the regimen. And the nice thing is you can change this at any time that you want. So if a new product comes out, it's very easy for you to update what pops into the regimens. And this keeps everyone in your office on the same page and making the same recommendations. So we have 220 doctors using our software. And what we've found is most people like to just click that recommended button and it just puts all my favorites in there. And I keep those up to date with products going out. And um, like I said, each category of, in, of product like vitamin C serum has all these very strict rules that apply. And that's what makes the regimens work. We know that the step order of the products are going to be correct because each product affects the products that go before and after it. So what's amazing is Amy and I didn't know each other, but we think the same about skincare. And when we met and we were talking about Dermamade and she was telling me about it, I realized that the products actually fit all the rules and parameters of the software. So it's, we're actually a perfect team working together to help doctors sell skincare. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through different patient types that you probably see in your practice. And after each patient, we're gonna discuss it and invite you to ask questions if you have any questions about that patient and try to only ask about that patient because we're gonna have a next patient and probably um, a different topic will come up that you are going to ask about. So the first is an acne patient, very typical for us in dermatology, under the age of 30, has oily skin, has acne. This is a skin type six, what I call oily sensitive, non-pigmented type, meaning they don't need any anti-aging, they don't have any pigment issues. So think for a second, what would you do in your practice? How are you gonna treat this patient? What are you gonna give them? Well, remember you get to set the software to put what brands and what products you want, but I'm gonna show you how we would do it with Dermamade. So if we wanted to give them an all cosmeceutical regimen, then this is what it would look like. Now, the software generates two kinds of regimens. The full regimen, meaning every product that they would need, we call this the regimen that get, makes you get better faster. And there's also a starter regimen that's just the three most important products, and those are more affordable. So people can pick between more affordable and faster results, basically. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So if you want to do an all cosmeceutical regimen for this acne patient, this is what it would look like. So we're going to go through each step. This is the AM part of the regimen, and this is the PM part of the regimen. And you see you have steps, and the patients love knowing what order to use the products and have specific instructions. So after they take the quiz and get their regimen, they're actually emailed information about their skin type and information about how to treat it. So for example, if you get retinoid dermatitis, what to do, um, starting your retinoid slowly, all those things that we spend a lot of time in our practice telling patients is all automated. So this saves you so much time. A lot of doctors who are seeing so many patients a day, maybe you're somebody who's seeing 60, 80 a day in your practice, you don't even have to bring this up with the patient. You can have the patient take the quiz in the waiting room, and then they'll get the email with all the information at their home. And like I said, we have 220 doctors doing this. We have everything from my practice where I sit down and I discuss every step with the patient, like I'm going to tell you, versus somebody who doesn't think about it at all, and the patient's all automatic and it happens anyway. So, and everything in between, there's so many options. So this is a full cosmeceutical regimen for an acne patient. So the first step is the Dermamade MediWash. If you look over here, it has sulfur and salicylic acid in it. And the reason I like sulfur and salicylic acid for acne is first of all, they're both anti-inflammatory. Salicylic acid is in the salicylate family. So it's an aspirin, it's the same, same family as aspirin but also it has a low pH. And when you lower the pH of the skin, then the, the acne bacteria doesn't like to live on the skin that has a low pH. That's why a lot of different hydroxy acids are used for acne. So step one would be this wash. And the nice thing about this wash is it also works for seborrheic dermatitis and tinea versicolor and a lot of other things that you would use a dander shampoo for. You can use this Medi wash and it, it has a really nice smell. So I really like it. So you do that first and then you do an eye cream. 
And I'm going to talk about the eye cream once, and then it's the same for every patient in the future. In my opinion, the eye creams are most important to protect the skin from the rest of the regimen. So if you're putting a retinoid on at night, it gets on the pillowcase, it can get on their eyelids and irritate them. Um, so I like to use an eye cream um, at the, the second step to protect them from the rest of the regimen. The third step is the Dermamade Niagenic Lotion. And if we look over here, it has niacinamide in it. And we're gonna talk more about niacinamide in this lecture. It's one of my favorite ingredients. It does so many things, but the reason it's in this regimen is because it's anti-inflammatory and non-comedogenic. And then a physical sunscreen. Um, and that would be the morning regimen. And then at night, we would do a different cleanser. We would do the light foaming cleanser. It has a very gentle detergent in it, but I like to use a different um, cleanser at night with a detergent because it does a better job of getting sunscreen and oil off of the skin. And a lot of times when you're putting your agony patients, as you know, on retinoids or benzoyl peroxide, they can be really irritating. So I don't like to do a salicylic acid twice a day in my agony patients that are new to retinoids. So that's why there are two different cleansers in this regimen. Again, the same eye cream. Step three are the peel pads. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, step four is the retinol bacuchiol. And retinol and bacuchiol are a really great mix. This is the, a lower dose, 0.25. You can also do a 0.5. And there was a study in the Journal of Drugs and Dermatology that showed that retinol and bacuchiol together had the same efficacy of tretinoin, but with a lot less irritation. And it's also a lot, in, at least in Miami, where my patients are, it's a lot cheaper for them to buy uh, retinol than it is to try to get the, um, the tretinoin approved. Then the last step would be the niagenic lotion. So this is, again, for an oily acne patient, and you can see it's $273.50. Now that might be too much for a lot of teenagers. I have a lot of parents that say, uh, you know, I don't wanna spend that much money. Uh, that's a lot of money. So we have some other options. So the next option is maybe you prefer to use prescription medications. Maybe their insurance is going to cover the prescription medications. So the way the software works is it has these little boxes on the side. And when you check those boxes, it pops in um, whatever acne medicine you picked in the software. So this doctor picked Levy as the acne medicine they wanted to use. If you had something else that you preferred, that would pop in. But we have all the different drugs in here. So it's the same regimen you saw before, but in right here in step three, they're going to have Levy in the morning and they're going to have Levy at night. And then instead of the retinol, they're going to do Altrino. Um, I've found when in the, the 220 doctors that work with us, I probably have about 20 that have emailed me in the first couple of weeks and said, I can't believe how many fewer calls I'm getting to my office about people getting irritated from their retinols. And the reason is, <clears throat> excuse me, you're telling them what cleansers and what moisturizers to use. A lot of times we don't take the time to do that. And if they're using the right cleansers and the right moisturizers, they're going to tolerate their retinol so much better. And in this situation, you're giving them the anti-inflammatories because you're giving them niacinamide, which is anti-inflammatory, and sulfur and salicylic acid. So that's going to help them tolerate it a lot more. And now we've gotten the cost down to 175.50. Of course, we don't know how much their copay is going to be, so we didn't um, conclude prescriptions in here. Now, you also have, if you look at the regimen, there are five steps in the morning and five at night. And this is a young girl and I have kids. <laughs> My kids aren't gonna put five things on. So we came up with the starter regimens and this is much easier. And this is the three most important products. That's when you put starter on the software, it's the three most important products that are gonna give them the best results, the fastest without any problems because we don't want callbacks to the office. So in this patient, these three products will do a lot because we're using the salicylic acid in the morning still. We're using the anti-inflammatory in the still. I hate it that we're not giving them a sunscreen, but you know these are acne kids and we're just trying to get them to use their products. Then at night, we're doing the sulfur and the salicylic acid again and the retinol and the niagenic lotion. And now we've gotten the cost down to $125.50 and they don't even have any prescriptions to buy. So this is a lot better. Um, and if we go back um, up here, I wanted to say there, these alpha hydroxy and beta hydroxy acid peel pads are really great for acne. 
And um, I'm going to let Amy tell you a little bit more about that because I usually don't use the pill pads on my patient. I usually use a, an acne medication in this step. So Amy, tell us about how you use this because you don't have them yeah, do it every so, day, right? So I don't, I usually do the regimen first minus the pill pads. And then I can probably get my patients maybe like 70, 80% better. But then I always want to do a little bit more when they come back in four to six weeks. So that's usually when I'll add the peel pads. Also, because I feel like patient's bandwidth is not always that high where they can do all of this. Um, so what I do with the peel pads is I usually have them maybe only use it three times a week. Depends on the patient, the skin type. If they're using it on their back, I can, they can use it much more frequently. And then what I do is I have them titrate up. So these peel pads are, a lot of patients have a love-hate relationship with it. They work so well, but they're very, very strong. It's 20% glycolic acid, and then it's 0.5% salicylic acid. So what I'll have them do is I'll have them wash their face first, then I'll have them rub the peel pads on their face, and then I have them leave it on for potentially only one minute the first time, and then the second time, two minutes, and then three minutes. And then I tell them, never leave it on for more than five minutes because then they will definitely get a contact dermatitis usually the first time around. And so I say, leave it on for up to five minutes and then wash it off. And then if they use it on their back, they can simply use it, um, put it on the back. And then sometimes they don't even need to wash it off because the skin is a little bit thicker. Um, and it works great for acne. It works great for acne scarring. So I even have my Accutane patients using it. And then obviously it also works for um, hyperpigmentation and we can get to those melasma patients later. On your, uh, the retinol Bacuchiol, um, your patients, do you have them start doing it every night? I have them do it every third night in the beginning for the first couple of weeks and then every other night. Do you do it that way or do you have yeah, it every night? I, I do it every night. I, we used to sell a retinoic acid in our office and then we switched over to the retinol with the Bacuchiol and the patients have no problems tolerating it every day. In fact, I even have them using it on the same day they use their peel pads and I get very, very little irritation. Um, and then sometimes, and you were the one that taught me this, is sometimes I'll have them switch it where they'll use the wash, then the lotion, then the retinol until they get used to it and then switch those um, order and do the retinol first on the skin and then the lotion second. And then they tolerate it quite fine. So I really haven't had a problem. And I do that too. Retinol gets in the skin so easily that if I want to lower the dose a little, I put it on top of the lotion too. Does anybody right. in the audience have um, any questions about this acne patient and how they would do it? Oh, and I also I forgot to show you this. They also can do the starter regimen with prescriptions and get the cost down to 70. So it's the same idea, but you're using the wind levy and the Altrino. Does anybody have any questions about acne patient? Is this how you would treat an acne patient? Is there anything unusual or something you don't agree with with this? And I don't know if they can ask questions. I hope so. Yeah, I'm trying to see if there's like a chat question answer. I think Madison has her um, hand up. So uh, Madison, do you want to answer? Do you have a question for us? Hi, yes, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah. you can. Excellent. And now I apologize because I'm very new to this. So, um, but I just was wondering the peel pads, especially with sort of the exfoliation that they give, it seems like that would be very good for on the arms for KP. Is there, it's is that a good indication? Okay. Yes. So for my KP patients, depending on how aggressive I want to do, I'll sometimes do the Medi wash because that is a lower pH and it's got the cell acid. Then I have them rub on the peel pads. And then for the KP, sometimes I don't even have them wash that off. And then I'll put the ceramide barrier cream over that and their KP gets so much better. It doesn't go away completely, but it gets tremendously better. So thanks for bringing that point up. And we're going to talk about that ceramide cream in another regimen. Um, and I see Jennifer has her name, her hand up. Do you have a question? I, but you're muted. I see that you're muted. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so if you guys want to um, ask questions, you can also use the Q&A feature or raise your hand and then we'll ask you to unmute, unmute. Okay, and I can't see the Q&A feature, so I'll let you be in charge of that. Okay. And Jennifer just put her hand up. Okay, 
So now we're going to go to another patient. This is skin type 11. This is another type of a patient that we all see all the time. Again, this is an oily skin type patient that has melasma, but also has anti-aging concerns. And so it gets a little trickier when you're trying to treat melasma and aging. So this again is going to be the all cosmeceutical regimen. And in this regimen, we're going to choose vitamin C. Um, we have different options and, uh, and it has to do a little bit with the patient's lifestyle and, and everything. So this patient is somebody who um, is plays tennis and is in the sun a lot. So I like to use a vitamin C to protect them from the sun when they're, when they're out there. So that's why I'm doing the vitamin C in the morning. But basically we're gonna do the same German-made MediWash. That's what's great is you don't have to have a lot of inventory because the MediWash will do a lot of different things. And the reason we're using the MediWash in this patient is again, the salicylic acid is going to be an exfoliant to help the melasma go away faster. It's also um, has some anti-aging to it by giving exfoliation. And um, it also lowers the pH of the skin so that when you put the vitamin C on, the vitamin C penetrates better. So I'm sure you've heard all the data about how vitamin C, when it's a pH of two to 2.5, it absorbs a lot better because that's the problem with vitamin C. It doesn't like to get in the skin. So if we can lower the pH with a cleanser before we put it on, it'll get in a lot better. And that's why vitamin C's, a lot of them sting because the pH has to be so low, but by using a cleanser first, you can get away with not having to have all that stinging. So that's why this patient is using the salicylic acid wash. Again, the eye cream, we talked about that, the vitamin C, and then the Melophade product is a trans-examic trans acid, kojic acid, and hexyl resorcinol. And I love hexyl resorcinol. Hex resorcinol and kojic acid are both tyrosinase inhibitors and trans acid has a, a different pathway that it hits. So we're hitting the pathway two different ways here. And then we're doing the exfoliation. So that's three ways. And then we're also hitting the, the pigmentation pathway with niacinamide, which I'm gonna go over the evening regimen in a minute and it has niacinamide in it. But niacinamide is a PAR2 blocker. So a protease activated receptor two blocker. So it blocks the transfer of the melanosomes into the keratinocytes. So I'm sure you remember that you make melanin, it packages in the melanosomes, those move up the arms of the melanocytes and get transferred through this doorway with a lock into the keratinocytes and niacinamide blocks that doorway. So with this regimen, you are preventing the pigment from being made, you're preventing it from going to the keratinocytes, and then for the cells that have it, you're exfoliating them off with the acids. Um, and you also are getting a great antioxidant with the vitamin C. So at nighttime, I would do, again, a different cleanser to help to get the makeup and the sunscreen off. Same eye cream we talked about, Melophade we talked about, and then the niacinamide and the retinol and bakuchiol again. So this is um, a melasma patient. They're usually more motivated to do five steps in the morning and five at night because they're so frustrated with this. And, um, and by the way, it takes really 12 to 16 weeks to see results. Um, and at least in Miami, we're in the sun. Is it that way, Amy, in, the, in Chicago? Does it take you guys as long to get better? I usually get six weeks. And then, oh, really? and then after six weeks is when I'll add the peel pad. Usually. You're so lucky in Miami. They, yeah. you know, they get sun every day. Yeah, we don't have sun every day. And then just to add one thing. Um, so the melophades a serum and the retinol is a serum. So what I usually do is I take that evening routine, step three and five, and I mix those two together on the palm of my hand, put it all over my face, and then I'll put the niogenic lotion over that. So I kind of play around with it a little different. And do you find any irritation with the melophade and the retinol together? None at all. Okay. So then um, you alluded to sometimes you use peel pads. So when do you use the peel pads versus the vitamin C? Okay. So I usually use peel pads at night just because I feel like it's a bit more of a process and they have to wash it off. They don't leave it on all night. And, um, and then believe it or not, their skin, when they wake up in the morning, their skin is glowing. It looks really, really good. Um, so I have them do it after they use the light foaming cleanser at night. I'll have them put the peel pads on. Then I'll have them wash it off with the light foaming cleanser and then do step two through five. Okay. So you would really do the peel pads right here. Yeah. And I use the vitamin C in the morning. And I, I mean, I hate to interrupt you, but you have taught me so much about vitamin C that I feel like our listeners 
would love to hear about vitamin C because it is the, one of the most confusing molecules. And when you try to educate your patients on vitamin C, because they'll come in and they'll be like, oh, I already use a vitamin C. And so, Leslie, how do you tell them that this vitamin C is different and what they should be looking at? Well, first of all, so many patients come in with a jar of drunk yeah. element of vitamin C. Um, and vitamin C is, first of all, it's hydrophilic, so it, it doesn't do well in creams. Um, second of all, it's very unstable in light and air. So when you open the jar, it goes bad immediately. That's why you want either an airless pump or a dropper. And that's why all the droppers are the amber color to keep light out of it. So that's one problem with vitamin C. The second problem is when they make it in the laboratory, sometimes they're, imagine a KitchenAid mixer, but a huge one. They're, they're stirring the vitamin C in this KitchenAid mixer and all this air and light is getting in there. They do this with retinol too, and it inactivates those. And, and so that's why um, a lot of vitamin Cs don't work. And that's why a lot of retinols are non-irritating because they don't work because they, right. were, they were inactivated. The other thing about vitamin C is there's so many different kinds of vitamin C, and but L-ascorbic acid is the one that all the data was done on with Sheldon Pinnell, and we know that if you uh, put L-ascorbic acid in a culture of keratinocytes, it will make them make more collagen. It's been proven many times. And if you remember your college chemistry, um, when you make collagen, you need ascorbic acids. I mean, scurvy is a disease where you don't have enough vitamin C and your collagen falls apart. So you need vitamin C to make collagen. So your retinols and all those are going to work better when you're doing vitamin C. Did I leave out anything? Because there's so many great things. You know, the only other thing I had a question on is like the percentages of vitamin C and like how, you know, Dermamate vitamin C, L-ascorbic acid actually compares to like the SkinCeuticals vitamin C. What is the percent of vitamin C in the Dermamade? It's, um... 15%, I think. I have to go back. I'm pretty sure it's 15%. Because I have I know SkinCeuticals has a 10, a 15, and a 20. I haven't found those to be different in any way except the price. Right. So I, um, prior to using Dermamade, when I used the SkinCeuticals, I would always use the 10% because I want people to use their vitamin C bottle up in a month but so that it's always fresh and good. So I want a, 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 the least expensive one so that they'll use it and they'll use it fresh. I don't want them to buy it, leave it there for six months and then use it because it's pretty worthless. Yeah, and does the CE Ferulic, um, I know the vitamin C for Dermamate has the vitamin B as well as a stabilizer and an antioxidant, but is the CE Ferulic really doing anything? It is doing a lot. I mean, the ferulic acid is an antioxidant. It helps with pigment and it stabilizes the formulation but it isn't doing any more than the other vitamin Cs that are made properly and have the right kind of ascorbic acid in it. Um, okay. and I actually am not a big CE ferulic fan because it's kind of sticky. Yeah. Uh, people don't like that sticky feeling, but there are other ones. That's another reason I like the AOX 10% SkinCeutical one because it's not sticky like the ferulic. So I've found the Dermamade one isn't sticky at all. It happens to be the one that I use, but I put vitamin C on my face, on my neck, on my chest, on my arms, yeah. I'm in Miami. So I go through it pretty fast. So Tiffany um, asked a question. Does anyone know if a patient can test their skin pH? And if yes, how? Oh, I test skin pH all the time. I have a pH oh, cool. meter. Yeah, I, I test all the vitamin C pHs too um, to make sure they're really the pH that the company tells you. If you buy it, look online. You don't want those little um, papers, those litmus papers that turn pink or blue because they only tell you acidic or basic. You want the actual meter that you put against the skin and it will tell you the pH. Now, um, the pH doesn't stay low very long when you use the cleanser. It's only a couple of minutes. That's why you use it and wash off the cleanser and apply your vitamin C right away while that pH is low. But your pH resumes back to normal pretty soon. And I have a whole lecture. If anybody out there is in Arkansas, I'm speaking at the Arkansas Germ Society. I'm going to be talking a lot about pH if you're going to be there. Um, but let's go back to this uh, melasma patient. Now this patient, let's say she wanted to use prescription because the previous one, that was $325 for, for five steps in the morning, five steps at night. If she decided she wanted to do prescription, again, you're, the software, you pick what pops in. But in this situation, I put hydroquinone. So you could do, I like to put the, I, the third step I call the treatment step. 
that's the step that's the most important thing because it's going on clean skin. So you wash the skin, you protect the eye area, you put the most important thing, the thing that bothers the patient the most right there. And then you have your um, another serum or another moisturizer. Now in this case, she's oily, so we don't need a heavy moisturizer for her. So we can do the Melifade and a sunscreen because the sunscreen is moisturizing enough for an oily skin patient. Then at night, again, this is, you know now why I do a different cleanser. You know why I do the eye cream. I think you know now why I do the Melifade. And then we can do the Triluma here if we want to. So yeah, this- one, one thing to add, I add, um, for patients with melasma, I make sure they get the tinted moist, uh, tinted um, sunscreen because it is iron oxide. And there was a study done that iron oxide, in addition to the zinc and the titanium, um, actually fades pigmentation better than without iron oxide. Right. And I grew up in Texas and I always joke that we've always known that because we wear a ton of makeup foundation. Yep. So we're getting all those that iron oxide um, protection and, and you see a lot less aging and melasma where I'm from with all of our foundation on. But um, the thing is that if you when you set up the software, you could set the software up to have a tinted moisturizer pop in no problem. Um, so you get to pick. I, in this situation, I just put untinted, but I agree. I like tinted a lot too. And a lot of my male patients like tinted. Do you, mm -hmm. do your male patient? I was a little yes. surprised by that, but they really do like it. It covers yeah. a lot of redness and things like that. It's totally true. In fact, today I, I told this patient it's tinted, but it's your skin color and um, they love it. And I make sure I tell them it's sunscreen and not makeup. So yes, I agree. Men, the, the tinted Dermamade is barely tinted. It's just enough to kind of cover up a little bit. So um, let's go and see what we would do if we didn't want to do as many steps. Oh, oh, I didn't do the starter regimen on this one. Sorry, I have so many other patients. Does anybody have any questions or, or ideas or input about how would you do your melasma patients? Do you agree with this? Um, I do, Amy, you and I've never talked about this, but I do a holiday. I do um, the tyrosinase inhibitors for four months and then I do a one month holiday. And mm -hmm. also I'll take them off all the tyrosinase inhibitors and just put them on vitamin C because mm -hmm. a lot of people believe that you get, you get tachyphylaxis from the hydroquinone and, and from the other tyrosinase inhibitors. Now I've looked, that has never been proven in any study and we all talk about it and many people do it and it's never been proven. So we don't know if it's necessary, um, but that's how I do it. It sounds like you don't do that. I don't. I mean, the only time I really consider doing that is when I'm doing the oral transemic acid. Um, and I'd be curious what you do with that. I, that's a whole separate topic, but boy, do I love oral transamic acid because again, in Miami, we have so much melasma and it works great. So I put do them you on give them a holiday too, or no? Yeah. Well, what I do with it is I give them um, the 600, 600 milligram pill. They break it in half. So they're getting half in the morning, half at night. As yeah. soon as their brown goes away, I take them off of it, but I, I keep do the them same on thing. all their tyrosinase inhibitors. Yeah. And then the minute it starts to come back, they go back on the pill. Yep. And I, and sometimes if it's real, real bad, I'll do the oral and the Melifade and then I'll tell them, okay. Or if I, I'll say, okay, now we're transitioning you just the topical transemic acid versus the oral. Right. I do um, oral and topical both, but again, melasma is the bane of our existence in mm -hmm. Florida. Plus we have a lot of darker skin types here too. So yeah. we don't, by the way, ever use laser or light um, on melasma here, because if you do, it, it gets better and then it comes back three times worse. But yes. just, we have sun exposure all the time. And then with these patients, I do the peel pads every day. Okay. And you would do that the same way you said before, the five minutes. Mm -hmm. Does anybody um, have any input questions about this melasma patient? Nope. Okay. So now we're going to go to um, a male patient, skin type 16. This is one of my favorites, dry, resistant, non-pigmented, wrinkle prone. And the reason they're one of my favorites is the, the fact that they're resistant and they don't have a lot of inflammation, they can really handle the strong stuff and they can see a result pretty fast. The key is we need to help their barrier. So they have an impaired barrier and that's going to make it hard for them to tolerate retinoids if we don't take care of their barrier. So... This is what we would do in a male that's 55 that has these issues that is willing to use five steps in the morning and five at night. 
So again, I would do the Medi Wash. And the reason again is exactly the same thing, lowering the pH, also a little bit of anti-inflammatory um, just in case before the retinol. Um, eye cream, same reason. Vitamin C, same reason we talked about before. It's anti-aging. Um, I'm assuming that this patient and the last tennis patient are getting sun during the day. And your sunscreen um, actually can make free radicals when it's exposed to sun. So if you have vitamin C underneath that, that can help prevent some of the free radicals. So I love to use vitamin C in the morning in my patients. Then this is the ceramide barrier cream we were talking about before. Um, where is it? Here it is. So this has um, ceramides and so it's very hydrating. And, it, um, and so that's why anybody who has dry skin needs to be on this barrier cream. And then um, also the moisturizer. Now this could be the tinted one or it could be the untinted one, but this is a physical sunscreen. Then at night, we're using a, the different cleanser for the same reasons we talked about. Eye cream, same reasons we talked about. I'm doing the vitamin C serum again because I wanna give him extra anti-aging. And um, again, we're doing the barrier cream and the retinol bakuchiol. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this before, but I always start my retinols as the last step on top of a moisturizer because compliance is such an issue with retinoids, as you guys know. So this makes it titrate um, better and easier. So what I do, and, and if, I'm, I'm curious to see how you do it, Amy, but I start them on the lowest strength, this 0.25 on top of a moisturizer. I do every third night, then every other, then every. Then when I get them doing it every, I change them to the 0.5%, which is stronger. Mm -hmm. And once they're doing that every night, then I flip it and I put the 0.5 and then the moisturizer. And then that way I can get them up to a stronger one, usually without any problems. Um, how, how do you do that? I pretty much do it the same, although I really haven't been doing the moisturizer first and then the retinol. Um, unless they have really, really sensitive skin. Um, and I haven't had a tough time at all with this Bakuchi oil. I think the addition of that anti-inflammatory makes it a lot less irritating. Um, but I agree, I um, increase them to 0.5 once they've tolerated the 0.25. And maybe you can comment on, I never do a 0.1 because I feel like it's very incremental. It's more irritating and, and the efficacy rate isn't really any different. Do you agree with that? Well, I like to get them on the strongest as possible. So I actually go to the 0.1 tretinoin. And then once they're used to that, I go to the um, 0.05 to xerotene. And then I end up with 0.1 to xerotene, which is the strongest. And I personally can do 0.1 to xerotene on my eyelids because I've been on retinoids for so long. Yeah. Um, so I'm a huge retinoid, retinoid fan. As long as it's made properly and packaged properly, I love, I think it's the most important skincare product for everybody. And um, they did a study, say Wong Kang did a study on 80 year old people in their, in their arm area, um, small, um, the fine lines and wrinkles and showed that retinol, even over the counter cosmeceutical retinol does get rid of, in, of um, intrinsic aging wrinkles under the arm in non-sun exposed areas. So I thought that was really a great study. I mean, we all know it works in photo exposed areas, but this study showed it works even in non-sun exposed areas. Great. So this is a $315 and lots of steps. Um, a lot of men I found 35 and under are willing to do these whole complete routines. And I found that 35 seems to be the magic number above that. They want fewer steps. I'm not sure why that is. Um, now also I bet they can shave with this Medi wash too. If they have um, seborrheic dermatitis in their beard or they have um, shaving irritation, can they shave with that? Yeah. That's what I thought you were going to say. It's great for folliculitis too. So um, this would be a starter regimen for somebody who didn't want as many steps. Again, we've got the Dermamade Medi Wash in the morning. Then we're going to do the moisturizer and the sunscreen. And then at night, we're doing the, um, the wash and the vitamin C. Now, you may think, well, why didn't she put them on a retinoid? She just told us that it's the most important thing. Well, the starter regimen, again, is designed for them to see a result and not have any problems. So with the vitamin C, they'll start to see their skin brightening up and looking better. You'll gain confidence with them. And then they're much more likely when they come back to get on the retinol. So that, that's how I do it is I, I get them to use the products and see a difference. And then I give them maybe the ones that take yeah. more long term. Let's see. Yeah, that's all. Anybody else have any questions about this patient or what they would do? Nope. nope. Okay. And you're not getting any there. Okay. Nope. 
All right, this is my skin type. I have a tough skin type. I'm a DSNW. That means I'm dry, I have rosacea, I'm super sensitive. I don't have any pigment, but I'm wrinkle prone. Luckily, I'm not 60 yet, but we're getting, getting close. But this is my skin type. And um, so I was very close to my heart. And so this is the cosmetic plus the, um, the prescription medicine regimen. So we've got five steps in the morning and four at night. So the MediWash, the sulfur and the salicylic acid is really great for rosacea, actually. Um, I've always loved salicylic acid for rosacea. Again, the eye cream protects the eye area. I, I like Rofade in the morning, but you could put whatever um, drug you like for rosacea in this spot. Then I do the Ceramide Barrier Repair Cream. <clears throat> and um, that also helps push the Rofade into the skin better by giving, um, doing occlusion. So that's nice. And then the sunscreen. Then at night, again, the different cleanser, the different eye cream, I think you're starting to see the pattern. Then we put the most important product on next, which is the cilantro in this case. And then again, the moisturizer to push it all in. Um, is there anything else you would talk about with this um, rosacea patient and how you treat your rosacea patients? Yeah, sometimes I use the niacinamide because I think that helps with redness too. So maybe I'll have them use the niacinamide in place of the barrier cream in the morning and then maybe keep the barrier cream in the evening. You also could do your niacinamide cream instead of the Rofade in the morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I yeah. really get great results with my rosacea patients with all cosmeceuticals. Me we didn't too. have much time to go through every option here. Um, I just wanted to show how it works with medications, but um, a lot of the soothing cosmetic things would work just as well as a lot of the prescription rosacea medication. Um, now, do you notice in your patients that when they use chemical sunscreens and they have rosacea that they sting a lot and they have a lot of uh, problems with that? Yes. And I think that's a really, really important point. Mineral is so key for rosacea patients because the mineral sunscreens will reflect the light, whereas the um, chemical sunscreens will absorb light. And so I get very hot. I'm more of that flushing type of rosacea patient. So anytime I have a chemical sunscreen, I get hotter because of the absorption of the light, whereas the physical blockers cool my skin down. And I sting from all of the chemical sunscreens, especially avobenzone, which is parsol, yeah. which is in all the Neutrogena sunscreens. Um, and also when people sweat, it'll burn their eyes, but that's the parsol. Um, yeah. I'm also methoxycinamate. I'm allergic to that. So I really have switched over with my patients, almost predominantly no chemical sunscreens. Same. <clears throat> so this would be if you wanted to do all cosmeceuticals. Oh, we were just talking about this. We've got the sulfur wash. Here's where you would do the niacinamide lotion and the sunscreen. And then again, the wash and the barrier cream. And it is really amazing that you live in such a cold place and I live in such a hot, humid place. And we treat our patients the same way with the same products. It's, we have the same oh. philosophy. And this is um, only $135.50. Yeah, yeah, I also want to comment, like these bottles are eight ounces. So they're, they're big. They're, I mean, the barrier cream is a big mm for $33. So I have patients using that on their entire bodies when they get out of the shower or my eczema patients use it too. So I think quantity is really important too when you talk regimens, like how much of everything should you be using? Do you have any kind of a feeling of what the average dollar amount each patient spends in your office? I know in our office, it's about $138 per visit. So it's exactly in line with, with this cost. Now, that is a great question. I don't know the answer, but I do know that patients will buy one like skin suitable product and they can't, but they'll buy the whole regimen of Dermamate, which will be the same price as the skin suitable. And then the other thing is I, even if my patients have a ton of money, they've, they've, I've never met a patient that has a ton of money that doesn't like to save money. So I think it's a very easy switch where patients don't want that price point to be more than $50. Right. Well, so for skin type solutions, we run the e-commerce um, business for all of our doctors. It's a turnkey solution. We, we ship the products and everything and, and we we're very data oriented. We track everything. And we found that when they know their skin type, they spend three times as much money because they get wow. the whole regimen and they're more likely to repurchase and stay compliant, which is really our entire goal is to keep people yes. compliant. 
But what's interesting is their average price per product is between 30 and $40. So it's not that they're buying more expensive things from us. They're just buying the entire regimen. They're more likely to get their entire full regimen because they get results faster. But what's interesting, again, is that it's this $30 to $50 price right. range that is what people want. I totally agree. I think that what dermatologists, have, a lot of times they don't realize that and they're selling these expensive products and then people aren't buying them. And that's really part of the problem. Yeah. Okay, so skin type 10, this is the healthiest skin type. They don't really have any issues. Um, in my opinion, a little bit of oiliness is better because you have all this vitamin E in your sebum. Um, the big issue with oily skin patients is that they get clogged pores and they, they feel like their pores are large. So imagine a young girl with large pores, a little oiliness, no other problems. We, we don't often see these in our practices, but sometimes we do. Um, and this is what we would do with this patient. So I've found that oily people love the hyaluronic acid gel. So I would do the same wash we've been talking about, the hyaluronic acid gel on a sunscreen in the morning. And hyaluronic acid is very interesting. People think it's anti-aging, but it's not anti-aging long-term so much as it is more of an instant result. So it binds on your skin and binds water and pulls water onto your skin and plumps the wrinkles up really fast. And so people like that. And the young people, they like that dewy, radiant look. Um, they have all these names for it, like glass skin. And um, have you seen the new jello trend on, on TikTok? They're talking about jello skin. Jello skin is really skin that has hyaluronic acid on it. So it has that bounce back feeling that jello has. And um, so I love to use the hyaluronic acid gel for my oily patients. The other reason I like hyaluronic acid gels is I'm trying to get something into the skin better. So in this patient, um, again, we do the different cleanser at night and the hyaluronic acid gel. The reason I'm doing retinol in this patient is I wanna prevent aging in her. I'm lucky that she's coming into my practice even though she doesn't have acne, but she does have clogged pores and she's worrying about her pore size. So I want to get her on the retinol. And because she's not sensitive, she's oily, she doesn't have any issues. I want to get as much of that retinol in her skin as I can. And we know hyaluronic acid makes everything else penetrate better. It's actually put in prescription drugs to make them penetrate better. So hyaluronic acid not only stays on the surface and pulls water, but it takes the other ingredients around it in with it. And you need to know that because if you're putting an acne patient on benzoyl peroxide and retinoids, you shouldn't really use a hyaluronic acid when they're getting used to those things because you're going to be increasing the strength of the benzoyl peroxide and the retinoids and they're gonna be more likely to get retinoid dermatitis. And a lot of that acne, that teenage 20 year old age group is using hyaluronic acid because they think it's anti-aging. So make sure that when you're starting people on acne meds, you don't have them on the hyaluronic acid right away when you're starting the retinol. But when you really want it to be strong, then you use it. And in this patient, I would probably start her around the 0.5 actually. Would you start her on the 0.5 retinol or the 0.25? I usually start on 0.25, but either one. Okay, I'm looking at where, um, again, we got so excited, we talked too much, so I'm going to go a little faster. Yeah. All right, skin type 12, this is an oily patient. She's, again, not sensitive, and she's wrinkle prone and, and resistant, so we can do a lot more with her. And so this is what her full regimen would look like. Um, so, so we'll do the salicylic acid, the eye cream, the vitamin C for the reasons that we talked about. Now she's a resistant patient and we really want to do anti-aging. So we're gonna put the hyaluronic acid on top of the vitamin C and push it in. So we just raised our vitamin C efficacy by lowering the pH with the salicylic acid, putting, then putting the vitamin C on immediately and then putting hyaluronic acid on top to help push it in the skin and then covering it with a sunscreen. At night, um, similar to what you've seen before, the light cleanser, the eye cream, the vitamin C, the hyaluronic acid, and the retinol. I think you guys are starting to hopefully see the patterns here. And this is a 292. And if she wants to just do a starter regimen, these are the most important ones here. And skin type 15, we'll go a little faster. And this is, um, this is somebody with melasma and anti-aging. So we want to, and she's dry also. So similar to what you've seen, the salicylic acid, the eye cream, the melophade, but then we want to use the heavier barrier cream to push everything in. 
at night, um, same idea that you've seen before, the same cleanser, eye cream, the vitamin C, but on her, we're going to do the retinol and put the ceramide on top to really push it in. And again, 291.50. Um, so, Ashley had a quick question on hyaluronic acid. It seems to be saturated in the market. Is there anything different um, that differentiates Dermamade from the others? Um, so you can answer or I can answer, it's up to you. Um, I'll tell you what I know about hyaluronic acid and you can tell me what you think, I guess, about Dermamade. There's different HAs. It's the length of the chain that matters. Yeah. So um, it's like a ladder and they cut it up. If you have little pieces, it's more likely to bind water because it has more surface area. If it has longer pieces, it lays on the surface of the skin, almost like fondant where it just makes it feel a little puffy. Um, it's the little pieces that help penetration more. And that's really all I know. What, it, uh, what, what do you think? We made a concerted effort with the hyaluronic acid from Dermamay to have the highest percentage there was. And so, you know, I think people don't realize that the highest percentage of hyaluronic acid is only 2%. And so Dermamade is 2%. And I think like this HA5 was, I looked into it, I think it was only like one or one and a half percent. So um, I look at the percentage and then I know the Dermamade molecule is a lot larger. The hyaluronic acid is a larger molecule. Um, so, but I don't really know, I can't speak to other hyaluronic acids, so. I don't think that the five different kinds matter. The, the, no. It's called H5 because there's five kinds of HA. I do like it when there are two different kinds of HA, but five is really more of a marketing thing than really anything else. Agree. Yeah. So um, and I hope we have a little more time at the end and I hope you guys will ask questions. But why does all this matter? Um, Amy and I both feel very strongly that we need to sell products in your practice. I think it's unethical not to, and I know you're going, what? But the reason is patients are going to go buy products they're going to, and they're going to buy them from somebody who knows nothing about their skin. Most likely they're going to get them online. They're going to go to CVS or they're going to buy them from a, a sales lady at a Sephora who's just trying to sell them whatever deal's going on. I mean, you're a dermatologist and you know about skin. And even if you're not interested in skincare, you can use my software and, and delegate all the science to me. But those patients, when you interview them and when I did my surveys, they want you to sell products to them. And if you don't have time to talk to them about this because you're seeing so many patients, that's where my software comes in is um, we educate them for you through email. So they take the quiz. You don't have to be part of that. They get their email that tells them what their skin type is and what to do with products you already chose in the software. They get the emails that educate them about their skin type. And then the day 30, it tells them what to look for. Day 60, day 90, what to do if you're getting retinoid dermatitis. So it's all handled without you. Um, we brand it with your logo and everything. So um, the emails are coming from you, but you don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Of course, you could go ahead and talk to every patient like I do if you want to. So it's up to you. Um, we know that affordability really matters. 30% of patients don't fill their prescriptions, and it's usually because of cost or the hassle. That's why they want to get it from you. Um, and only 5% of people in the U.S. purchase skincare products over $75. We have a very, very busy online store. I think I told you already with 300,000 people, and I see this data is absolutely true. Uh, patients want product education and recommendations. The physician dispense skincare segment of the market is the most rapidly growing, way faster than Sephora and on, online and other things is physician dispense. And that's because people want to get it from their doctors. They want confidence. There's so much misinformation out there. And uh, the brands know this. And that's why they have sales reps coming into your office, because uh, they know that this market segment is growing very fast. Um, it's also on the money side, it is a very significant income stream that helps your staff. And maybe you, you're not financially motivated, but it lets you hire more MAs, which helps you have better customer service. It helps you, um, you know, get that new laser, whatever it is. So you do, um, this is a very easy, ethical way to make more money in your practice. And do you have anything to say about that, Amy, too? Yeah, a um, couple things. I find that as a dermatology resident, we didn't really learn anything about cosmeceuticals. And I had to seek um, you out and Zoe Dralos out and to really learn it myself. And I hope this presentation has really helped. Um, but we need to take this back. We need to own skincare because all of these 
influencers that know nothing about skincare are killing it on TikTok. And I think it's, we were doing ourselves a disservice by not learning it in our residency. Um, and I found this statistic really, really important. 80% of patients will buy something within 24 hours of seeing you just based on what you said. So if you say to them, oh, you should really use a retinol, but they don't want to buy your retinol, they're going to go within 24 hours to CVS or uh, Walgreens and buy something that has a retinol in it. Um, so it's really important that we try to keep it in our specialty um, and get the right products too. We're going to go buy the drunk elephant retinol, but right. all the cases come in that it doesn't work and it has all kinds of esters in there. And I just can't even believe that um, how popular it is when it's such a bad yeah. product. <laughs> Um, so basically, um, we're both going to tell you a little bit about, so our software, again, you can choose what brands you sell. We have over 40 brands you can choose from. You could be all Dermamade. You could do some Dermamade. You could do what, you know, any of these 40 brands. You set up the software. We're a turnkey e-commerce solution. You could have an online store in two days. That's how quick it is. Um, we ship all the products for you that come in a, a box. So even if they're ordering three, five different brands, they're getting those all in one box. They're not getting that Amazon envelope with one cleanser one day and another cream a different day all thrown in there. They're really nice and packaged beautifully, all multiple brands. I'm like, I'm what I call brand agnostic. It's very, very important to me that um, I test all the brands with each other and I don't just test. So in other words, I've tested the Derma, Derma made brands with SkinCeuticals and with a bunch of other things as well. Um, we refer you patients because we have a big uh, direct-to-consumer outreach. We're getting lots of um, traffic to our blogs at skintypesolutions.com. And if we know they're in your zip code and you're with us, we refer them to you. If you want to know more, go to sellmoreskincare.com and you can click on that calendar there and set up an appointment and talk to my people. We'd love to have you guys. And um, if you want to be an all Dermamade store, you can have a QR code on your phone. And the next time you're at a party and somebody starts asking you Derm questions, because <laughs> it always happens, oh, they can so scan your QR code and go take the quiz and go to your online store right there at the party. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. And um, with Dermamade, what I love about it, so there, he, uh, Damien is the person to contact, and you can see that on the screen. But um, for people who have listened in, he's offering a promotion, whether or not you're, even if you're an existing customer. Um, but for all customers, and I tell all my patients, if you don't like it, bring it back. So we, um, we take it back and we give them their money back and they're like shocked by it and barely anybody brings it back, but there's always a hundred day money back guarantee. And you're not going to find Derma made on Amazon and the price online, the price in the office is always going to be 50% less than the price online. Um, and it's fully integrated with forefront software too. So it's been great for my practice. And if you only want to try one or two things to get started, try the vitamin C and the retinol. You're going to love them. And they're so much cheaper. And your patients are going to never want to buy a CE Peru like again. Yeah. <laughs> and I use them. Um, I've never written for ketoconazole shampoo ever. The MediWash works great in place of that. And it's probably cheaper than half of people's prescriptions. So yeah, I think let's see if we have any other questions. You guys um, are making it too easy on us by not yeah. asking us hard questions. Nobody? Okay. Hi. Well, Amy, Leslie, thank you so much for an incredible presentation. That was very informative. Thank Makes you. me realize that I'm not doing enough for myself. I should be more on a skincare regimen. Um, but you bring up a great point on the importance of really providing our patients this, um, you know, this value uh, and, and um, a skincare regimen, which is important. Thank you again, and everybody uh, join us next month on March 9th for a look into Win Levy. We're going to look at the studies, the efficacy, and all attendees will be receiving a free complimentary uh, meal voucher for, for joining. So thank you again uh, tonight, and uh, everyone have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.